When you make it to the NBA, people always assume the players love what they do. I mean, they spend basically their entire lives working towards this goal, chasing their dreams and trying to make it a reality. For many players, however, regardless if you're an all-star or former all-star or role player, a lot of guys don't love the game. In fact, some went on record to say that they hate playing basketball, and they only like the lifestyle it comes with and all the money involved. How's it going folks? My name's Andy, and today we're taking a look at 5 NBA players who hate the game of basketball. But before we continue, I'd like to give a special shout out to my sponsor, Factor. For those who don't know, I've been using Factor long before I even got sponsored, and I can vouch that their meals are freaking delicious. It's not like your typical microwave meal. Factor provides restaurant quality, ready to eat meals that are fresh and never frozen. Most people don't have the time or don't want to put in the effort to cook every single day, especially when you consider all the cleanup and preparation, it takes even longer. But you also don't want to order takeout all the time either. Factor is the perfect choice for you, and they have a bunch of different meal packages to choose from. I got this one, which is their keto meal package. I've been cutting down the carbs recently, so I figured a keto meal plan would be a good idea. This is the loaded bacon and chicken meal. Just poke some holes and heat it up for 2 minutes in the microwave and you're good to go. As you can see, it was pretty damn delicious. Factor has so many meals to choose from, over 35 different options including vegan, low calorie, and protein plus meals, so you can adjust your package however you want. Go to factor75.com by clicking the link in the description below and use my code ANDYHOOPS50 at checkout to get 50% off your first Factor box. Plus, you get some free wellness shots for life with any active subscription. Number 5. DeAndre Ayton On July 2018, shortly after DeAndre Ayton got drafted by the Suns with the first overall pick, he was asked a simple question. What does success in the NBA look like for you? To which Ayton responded, Definitely getting to my second contract. That's my success. This answer kinda perplexed some folks. Most players give the generic answer of like, to make all-star teams, to win championships, and stuff like that. But Ayton's goal was to get to his second contract? Over the years, he reiterated his desire to make money to build generational wealth for him and his family. That was his goal in the NBA, and there's nothing wrong with that. Kudos to Ayton for reaching his goal. However, for the fans who watched him sign a $130 million contract and to see him make barely any progress since his rookie year, it's disappointing. Ayton has no desire, no motivation to improve. All the weaknesses he's had since his rookie year, the passiveness, the lack of consistent postgame, his lack of awareness, you still see all of that today. For a guy who's a legit 7-footer, a 250-pound beast of an athlete, a guy once considered to be the next generational big man, who should be competing with the likes of Jokic or Embiid right now. He was one of the greatest prospects we've ever seen. There's a reason he got drafted ahead of Luka, ahead of so many others in a stacked 2018 draft class. Everyone had so much faith in Ayton's raw ability and talent. Yet, it's very clear at this point, this is who he is. And he's content with simply remaining at the same level, with no urgency to keep improving. I mean, <laughs> he made it to his second contract after all, right? That was his goal. This isn't anything new, however. This sentiment is actually quite common among taller guys, especially 7-footers. Many of them get encouraged to play basketball simply due to their height, but they don't have the same passion as somebody who's like a point guard. Smaller guys have much more competition at their height bracket, so if they want to make it to the NBA, they need to have a high level of motivation and work ethic to make it. DeAndre Ayton falls into the category of a long list of 7-footers who don't have the drive to become an all-time great, because he views basketball as a vehicle to achieve wealth, not because he loves the game. The thing is, even after his current $130 million contract expires, he still has enough talent to get another contract afterwards. Ayton is not a bad player. He's a decent player with a super high ceiling, but he chose not to reach it. Number 4, Ben Simmons. In the 2021 playoffs, this happened. Ben Simmons right there. You got it. And I know you got it to Thibault, you got. 
Following this embarrassing play, Simmons' career changed forever. This happened in Game 7 of the second round, where the Sixers eventually lost, despite being heavy, heavy favorites to win. Coincidentally, up until right now, the day I released this video, this was the last time Simmons appeared in the playoffs. We didn't think much of it at first. Simmons has never been the most aggressive player nor the best scorer on his team, but he used to be way more confident in his abilities. To make matters worse, shortly after this miserable playoff run, Simmons withdrew from the Olympics, held in Tokyo in 2021. He initially planned to play for the Australian national team, but instead, he said the reason he withdrew was to, quote, focus on individual skill development. I mean, that's a good sign, right? It seemed like he was taking accountability, but in the back of our minds, <laughs> we knew this wasn't gonna happen. He's gonna come back the same player, like always. What people did not expect, however, he would spend an entire year in what most fans speculated was a holdout and refusal to play. Simmons had already acquired a huge base of haters and critics, but this exacerbated the issue even further, as now he became the laughingstock of the entire world. An NBA scout who was close to Simmons' circle of friends was interviewed by The Ringer, and this is what he had to say about him. One of his problems is he does not put in the time to improve. Don't believe the IG or Twitter workouts you see his brother post. It's all phony. He loves LA and spends most of his time there in the offseason. He definitely has some Hollywood in him. If he ever gets serious about improving his shooting and free throws, he could be as good as Giannis. But I don't think he's wired that way. Back in 2019, when he signed a colossal 5-year $177 million deal, fans became impatient waiting for him to show improvements, or become more assertive, or show that he actually cares. Simmons, however, was always content with coasting along. Not only did his numbers take a steep dive in Brooklyn, in particular, his points, but it's his shooting, specifically his lack of shooting, that's infuriating to watch. Since that playoff game against the Hawks, Simmons is completely unwilling to shoot. It's gotten to the point where it actively hurts his team when the opponents know he's not gonna shoot. Whenever Ben puts his mind to it, he shows flashes of being a capable scorer, and when he does, he scores efficiently. Perhaps it's his back problems that are still bothering him, but even when healthy, he's no longer motivated to return back to the star he once was. Number 3, Darren Williams. Have you guys seen this before? <laughs> yeah, it's Darren Williams, former multiple-time All-Star competing in a boxing match. I talked more in depth about Darren Williams in a previous video. You might have seen it. It was about players who were never the same again after a horrendous playoff series. But what I didn't touch upon was Darren's growing resentment towards the sport that gave him so much. In a quote from an interview after his departure from Brooklyn, he talked about how injuries made him fall out of love with the sport he grew up loving. It took a lot out of me, man, those three years. Some of the hardest in my life. It made me question if I even wanted to play basketball when I was done with that contract. Over the years, Darren suffered numerous crippling injuries that forced him into months-long rehab sessions, and it took a toll on him mentally. He couldn't handle it anymore. Especially combined with his lackluster play, his inability to return to the player he once was, Darren was constantly in a state of feeling not good enough. You could tell from his attitude shift as his career went along, the once dynamic, enthusiastic point guard turned into a shadow of his former self. Years before his retirement, he already had one step out the door. Oh, you could tell, his game fell off drastically in such a short time. This was quite apparent in the 2017 Finals, where he had the worst performance out of anyone who touched the floor. Darren's love for other sports, in particular boxing, mixed martial arts, and even golf, they consumed most of his time on the side. He already had other interests that he simply enjoyed more, and basketball was no longer his priority. That's partly why his game regressed so quickly. Also, after that abysmal performance in the finals, he wasn't getting many offers either. So it was a quiet retirement for one of the NBA's most illustrious point guards. Number 2, Carl Anthony Towns. It's been a running joke in the NBA fandom that Towns cares more about video games than basketball. I've never thought about it, or how accurate that was, because people love to exaggerate on social media. However, it turns out to be true after all. On April 14th, 2023, shortly after the Wolves beat the Thunder in the play-in tournament, 
Mike Conley was doing his post-game interview, and then this happened. What vets do and guys who've won championships, like, that's the kind of attention to detail you got to have. Um, you can't just go home and play video games. Like, this is the time to, to do a little extra work. What's good? He said not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> watch some film first. <laughs> it's hard to say that somebody who scored 62 points in a game hates basketball. But Cat's lack of commitment and overall passiveness in the playoffs has been a big talking point over his career. Offensively, Towns is one of the most gifted players ever, with an incredibly polished offensive arsenal that few other big men could only dream of. Unfortunately, he also hasn't improved that much since his second or third season. For his entire career, it was also very obvious he had the talent and skills to be a franchise caliber player. A superstar who can lead the Wolves back into relevance. But he never wanted to be that. Towns never had the personality, or the killer instinct, to push himself to become a franchise superstar, cause his mind was never entirely focused on basketball. In this case, however, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Towns is perfectly content with being a sidekick, a secondary star. So it gave room for Anthony Edwards to become the face of the franchise. There's no power struggle within the team, because Towns is perfectly fine with somebody else having the spotlight. And finally, at number 1, Hassan Whiteside. Oh, here's a name you haven't heard for a while. I mentioned earlier in this video about how it's a lot easier for a 7-footer to make the NBA without having a passion for the game. Well, before DeAndre Ayton, there was Hassan Whiteside. He was projected to be a lottery pick back in 2010, but slid all the way down to the second round of the draft. The reason? His attitude. Even before the NBA, Whiteside had already showed signs of being not committed to the sport, and his behavior was called into question. At one point, his college coach even kicked him out of practice, and he was removed from the starting lineup, because he described Whiteside as being a, quote, disinterested and lackadaisical basketball player. Whiteside was basically banking on his talent to carry him to the NBA, and hopefully cash in on some hefty contracts. Little did he know, everyone in the NBA was aware of his maturity issues. So not only did he fall down the draft board, but he played a total of 154 minutes across two NBA seasons, before getting shipped to China. It was now when Hassan Whiteside finally had a sense of urgency. He essentially fell out of the NBA due to his own stupidity, and realized if he wanted to come back, he needed to get his act together. Over the years, he found his way back to the NBA as the Miami Heat gave him a chance. He performed very well in several seasons there, even leading the league in blocks. He was older at this point and more mature than he used to be, but those attitude issues would still peek their heads out now and again. And after finally making the money he wanted to, he just stopped working on his game. It's funny, because when he first joined Miami, People were like, oh my god, who the hell is this guy? He came out of nowhere and started dominating. There were some games where he looked unstoppable. But his rise to fame was just as quick as his fall to irrelevance. At least he still made over 100 million in his NBA career. The bulk of that came with the Miami Heat. But he never developed the work ethic or the good habits to prolong his career. But he accomplished his goal, and that was to get paid. Anyway, that's all folks, those were 5 NBA players who hate the game of basketball, and never had basketball as their primary focus. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, can you think of any other players who could fall into this same category, and are only playing to cash a paycheck? Which guys do you think will flame out of the NBA sooner than you realize, due to a lack of commitment? Thank you everyone so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed the video, and of course, as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.